Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Uh, actually, two requests this week for this very program. And it, it I felt bad because I feel like I had maybe to talk about this in the past, but I went back and checked. But we're talking about feeding from balconies and uh, for people who have limited uh, space to, to address their bird feeding wishes and desires and how best to go about that and what are some of the suggestions. So, yeah, we... Uh, you know, like this, it's easy to take credit for granted when we have a backyard and we have a deck, and we have poles in the yard, and and it's easy. And we talk about that kind of type of feeding a lot, but not everybody has that amount of space. Like if you live in an apartment complex, then you have usually you just have a very small patio, and you still want to feed birds. Well, I have customers who uh, I've helped with over the years in that very situation. They just have limited space, and we've tried to help them maximize the space so they can attract. Because everybody thinks, oh, I'm on the third floor or I'm on the second floor. I can't attract birds. Yes, you can. It, you, you get food, water, and shelter. That's all we're going to talk about. But how to address them in this limited situation versus uh, someone, you know, like I said, you got your whole backyard and you can spread things around and things like that. So I uh, thought we would get going with that. And the first one, a slide I'm going to bring up is of my deck. A little piece of the corner of my deck because it shows a, the three you know, ways to present food that we're going to talk about. Remember, food, water, and shelter. Birds are going to find that. If you're on the second floor, you're on the third floor, you'd be amazed at what kind of birds you're going to attract there, especially in like an apartment complex situation uh, where there's limited resources to begin with because of all the buildings and the parking lots and things like that. So uh, are you providing uh, food and water and, and a little bit of shelter and you can draw them in. And, and this is my back deck. And yes, I've got trees back there. But the reason I pulled this up is to show uh, the space and how to utilize it uh, on the deck railing. And I know we, we're going to talk about a different couple of different kinds of deck railing, especially the new, more popular uh, deck railings that are, are made of metal. It's hard to attach uh, the bird baths and, and the deck arms that I've got here. This is, a, uh, it, like I said, my situation, I've got a deck arm with a tube feeder on it hanging out over the open. And then I've got a little... Uh, square metal tray that sits on top of the deck, and I use little bungee cords so nobody can knock it off, wrapped around there to keep it in a tray where I can put seed in and open tree. And on the right is my favorite bird feeder and bird bath in the world that sits right up on top of the deck railing like that. And like I said, I know that there's different uh, types of situations for you. Yours may be different from mine. I happen to have a you know, a, a two by six is, a, is my deck railing for attaching to, and you may not. And then I've got a ground tray on the deck uh, that I use to, for the Junkos and those guys that like to feed on the on the floor like that. So what are some of the uh, situations that you need to think about when you're addressing this and how best to go about it? Okay. Uh, one piece of advice, very first is to be considerate of your downstairs neighbors. Uh, I know Carrie ran into this a couple of years ago when, when she lived on the second floor of a, a building and the neighbor below was complaining about, you know, uh, seed holes and things like that and droppings on the your neighbor below. So you need to do what you can to uh, feed clean seed, no holes, and use trays to catch the excess that falls down. Keep that from falling down on your neighbors below. And of course, one way to do that is to feed holeless seed. Uh, if you feed finches, this is fine. Sunflower chips, it works great. Uh, finches love it. It's higher in oil, higher in fat than Niger. Um, and they and it's very, very clean. There's going to be very little waste uh, at this because it's all food. It's 100% food. So for finch feeders, we recommend uh, the, the fine sunflower chips over the Niger because Niger is half, uh, half of that's a hull. So you get the black little holes falling down there and your neighbor, neighbors may not be happy underneath you there. So, And something like uh, for a mixed seed, Mark's No Waste Blend here has a lot of sunflower hearts and peanuts. There's no waste and there's no... Uh, uh, holes there. So that's a very clean style of feeding. So that's the thing to consider when you live in that situation where you got neighbors below you, especially is make sure you're, what you're feeding is very clean and then use uh, trays like are on this feeder here uh, that, that, that catches them. Plus it gives the extra feeding spaces for uh, the birds to, to utilize, but it helps keeps that seed from under the seed holes from falling down below you. So uh, clean feeding is really important. And there are the one situation that people think the most that they can't 
uh, do, especially if you kind of got a weird uh, a metal railing and you can't attach things to is water. Water, uh, you know, if you've got a, a, a railing like this, you can attach different kinds of bird baths to. But don't forget that you can set a bird bath right on your deck. You can set it down. This is called a Rocky Mountain bird bath. It looks like rocks and it's, it's great. It has a shallow end and a deeper end and it's great for birds. And it uh, sits just, just right on your deck. I've had people put it right on a table uh, on their deck instead of having it down on the deck. So uh, th this works well. And remember in water, we'd like to have moving water. So the best way to do that in uh, this situation is to add a water wiggler those little black agitators there underneath spin and it keeps the water moving and that helps attract birds uh, so they can find you that moving water. Uh, they see that and they come in, they want to utilize it. So a water wiggler in a, in a ground level bird bath is a great combination, but there are different kinds of bird baths. Uh, this one has a three in one. It has little legs, so you can set it on the ground like the last one, or it has an attachment where you can use it as a clamp on, to a deck railing if you have that. And if not, if you can screw it into your deck railing, uh, this is the same bird bath and it's heated. So you can run a cord out uh, and, and usually you have a, uh, an outlet out on your uh, deck thing, places like that. So you can run a little extension cord and keep that plugged in uh, so it stays unfrozen on it. And then the, the, the newer and more specially kind of bird baths and deck arms are the, these that attach right to the deck railing, the wrought iron railing. This is the bird bath that it is attached to the wrought iron. See how skinny that is? It clamps down on there. And they also have deck arms that do that as well. These guys you can see uh, on the metal deck railing. And then they, it, it can adjust the height somewhat by where you where you clamp it onto the railing at, at, up, up higher so you can see it. Um, and we these have become extremely popular at the store now. We sell a lot more of these. I think that the new fad and and deck built when people build decks is to use the iron, the wrought iron uh, railing. So um, the, 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 a bluster is the line that is called to attach to. So you you can use get baths and arms that that fit that need if that's the kind of deck railing you have. So uh, we love the the food and we they love water and they're going to come find it on your on your deck now cover is a little more difficult to address in that situation hopefully if you've got some trees around but these little roosting pockets um these are great you can hang them up under your eave uh, under your uh, uh on your porch and up and tuck up in little corners and especially carolina wrens and chickadees they love to roost in these at night house finches will roost in them and, and things so that's your way of contributing to the cover to where they can get out of the weather i've had people that have like a grapevine wreath hanging outside like that on the wall uh in, in that situation and the birds roost up in there at night they get out of there when it's snowing they get up underneath the eave and they're they're in that uh, wreath because they're uh, getting out of the weather so providing some kind of uh, uh cover for them to get out of is really you know pretty neat and you know like i said even uh, in a small situ situation like this, a little roosting pocket up in the corner, maybe one in each corner for them. Uh, the, this railing would be great for uh, attaching a bird bath to or feeder arms to. Uh, it, it, and it's got both kinds. It has the, the metal railing and it has, looks like it has a wooden uh, railing there on top. So you just have to adjust it for your situation. But don't think just because you're up on the second floor or the third floor, you can't attract birds. You know, hummingbirds, same thing. You can actually hang from under the eave here, uh, the overhang, you hang your hummingbird feeders from a little hook, uh, potted plants hanging from up there. That'll help with the hummingbirds, things like that. So it it's really is a, a doable situation and people uh, get discouraged and think they can't. But believe me, you can attract birds uh, to, to ride in apartment uh, buildings like that, right up on the second floor, right up on third floor, base floor, all of it. Um, they, you build it, they will come, as we say. It may take a little longer. You have to be patient. Keep your seed fresh. Make sure you definitely rotate it. But um, that, it, it's a great idea for a program because we do have more and more people who live in that uh, type of situation, and they, they wanted help to to help them get over the stigma that they cannot attract birds to places like that, but you certainly can. So it's a great idea for a program. I know Alyssa recommended that. And, oh, I'm sorry, I can't remember who the other person was, but really send in those suggestions. It really does help. So I hope that helped you guys that are in need for that. Uh, if you like the program, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, it, subscribe, if you will. Hit that bell for notifications. Until next time, we'll talk, let's talk birds.